Hi, my name is Josh Mahoney, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets. I wanted to provide you with my view on how the precious metal markets are shaping up, the likes of gold, the likes of silver. Over the near term, what could we expect? And also, how do things look over the longer term and 2024 as a whole? In terms of some of the charts I wanted to show you, the first of them is this gold against the US dollar charts. Now, first and foremost, we have inverted the US dollar, so the dollar index. So you could just look at it in terms of euro dollar, but I wanted to give you a wider picture in terms of the US dollar. Nonetheless, what we can see is when the US dollar strengthens, i.e. we have a risk off move for markets, generally gold weakens. So that really puts to bed the idea that gold is this great safe haven asset. In actual fact, generally, we see the US dollar playing that role as a safe haven. And gold just comes along for the ride sometimes. Um, but by and large, the historical trends do show you that when we see expectations of strength for the likes of the US dollar, you would expect to see some weakness for gold. And that's exactly what has been playing out of late so precious metal markets coming off somewhat as we see the US dollar strengthen. A second relationship worth noting is the price of gold to US Treasury yields. Again, I have inverted yields on this occasion. Um, this relationship kind of came under question over recent years, um, but we can see that it's playing out very well once again. Now, the question mark here is, when are we going to move into a period where everyone focuses on the fact that we're in the midst of rate cuts and seeing rate cuts and not necessarily just thinking we're going to see less rate cuts than expected? Because at the moment, we're starting to see yields come upwards once again. So as you can see here, rolling over uh, the inverted US 10-year. And so that really is born out of the idea that maybe we might not see the rate cut happen in March. Maybe we might not see as many as anticipated previously. And that could continue to play out, which is part of the theme over uh, what I'm talking about for the near term. But this is certainly another market worth watching out for as a gauge of what the expectation should be for the likes of gold and, of course, the likes of silver. Because when I show you the gold-silver ratio and overlay that with the US dollar, again, inverted, what we can see here is essentially... As might be expected, silver is the more volatile one of the two. So it means that when we see outperformance and a bull market for precious metals, we see silver doing better than gold. But as we've seen recently, and I'll show you with the charts, when we see weakness for the whole sector, it's silver that suffers the most and it's gold that holds up uh, much more so. Um, and that's something worth bearing in mind for the near term as we see this, these markets coming off, that silver might continue to see greater downside. In terms of the outlook for interest rates, this is part of why we've seen what we've seen recently. Why have we seen the US dollar strengthen? Why have we seen precious metals coming off? It's this repricing in terms of interest rate expectations for fir the first meeting, which is what we're looking at here. So March was previously anticipated as being the likely first rate cut. So previously, we were looking at around about a 33% chance that we see a rate cut coming into fruition in March, or sorry, 33% chance that we hold rates. So now that has moved to above 80%. And that has happened predominantly over the last month. Um, but as you can see here, a significant chunk of it has happened over the course of the past week. And that's why we're seeing that US dollar strength coming into play as people reprice away from the idea that we see March as the first rate cut. Then you have not only when is the first rate cut going to happen, but how many rate cuts are we going to have over the course of the year? Now, this is really interesting because over the weekend, we heard commentary or coming into this week, commentary from uh, the Fed chair, Jay Powell, who's essentially laid out the notion that he thinks we could see three rate cuts this year. Markets are currently pricing five. What we have seen in terms of the repricing, much like we saw in the previous chart, um, is that the idea that we're going to see seven rate cuts, which was previously a possibility, as you can see here on the left, the 350 to 375, that has essentially been stripped out now. Um, and we're also seeing uh, a, a significant deterioration in those calling for um, a six rate cut move over the course of the year. Now we're seeing some sort of 
sort of consolidation, not much movement on the five rate cuts, which is 400 to 425. Um, but we're seeing a repricing towards the nearer end. You can see a significant jump in those expecting four rate cuts, which is 425 to 450, and an increase on, on a smaller degree uh, to those expecting three, which is exactly what Jerome Powell has just alluded to. So this is the big question mark, right? So if we've seen US dollar strength recently around a repricing from seven, six rate cuts more towards five and four, what happens if what Jerome Powell has just said is the truth and they continue to move in the direction of, well, we're only going to see three? That's likely to see more of what we've seen at the moment, which is US dollar strength, which is the likes of gold and silver weakening off the back of that. And like I said, when we see silver, when we see gold decline, we're likely to see silver decline to a greater degree. This is a chart you might notice if you've been watching any of my previous videos. It's my breakdown for US inflation. Now we can see on the top section that it currently stands at 3.3, some way away from target. We can also see that we are about to see this 0.517 and 0.37 stripped out in the coming two months, right, which is the middle section. So we're going to see significant disinflation over the course of the next two months. That could help things, quite frankly. If you see an inflation report that sees a significant decline, let's say from 3.3 to 2.9, that's going to make you feel a little bit better, isn't it? 3.3 to 3%, you're moving in the right direction. Um, less so in the in the following month, because of course we're seeing that 0.37 stripped out. And if you look at the December number, that was 0.3. So we need to see a, a much lower number than the December reading. But nonetheless, the January inflation figure could give us a bit of respite in terms of precious metals, could see some weakness in terms of the US dollar. Um, but as we can see at the bottom section, once we've stripped out those to two figures, the annualized figures, so essentially that the pace that inflation is moving at over the 10 months without those two, that's at 2.87. So essentially, when moving in a trajectory that isn't on, on track to hit that 2% target anytime soon, that is something that markets are going to have to deal with because essentially the central bank are either going to decide they want to move ahead of time or not. And, you know, Jerome Powell has said that they'll be looking to cut rates three times this year. Um, and I think in part of that is because of, and he alluded this to his, alluded to this in his recent interview, um, is because of the huge pile of debt and the unsustainable debt picture that is currently in place in the US. So they really need to bring down the borrowing, the cost of borrowing. That's why they might move ahead of time. But nonetheless, the inflation picture doesn't look like it's going to hit target anytime soon. The US economy continues to look strong. Look at how the payrolls came out on Friday. Granted, a lot of them are part time jobs. But nonetheless, we're not necessarily seeing signs that are going to point towards a big pivot suddenly towards doing more from the Federal Reserve's over uh, Federal Reserve over this year. Nonetheless, once we get into it, once we get into this period of cutting interest rates, there's a chance that we then start to see the risk on play really gathering momentum. We see equity markets outperform and therefore you see the US dollar coming off. So over the near term, we see the possibility of some volatility around that January inflation gauge uh, from the US, because I think there's likely to be a significant drop off in, in that headline inflation number. Um, but I think there's a good chance we do see beyond that um, further upside for the US dollar. This is the US dollar chart. I'm just going to get rid of myself and go full screen. So this is the US dollar index. We can see here that the recent pullback essentially ended around about the back end of last year where we saw price action fall into the 76.4 Fibonacci and we've been moving higher since then. Very notable that we're seeing the dollar index rising four weeks in a row despite the fact that equity markets are reaching record highs. Uh, that really does highlight the fact that equity gains are really being driven by those big tech stocks. But nonetheless, we've seen the pullback the rally up through resistance, as we can see here on the daily time frame, we've broken through the 104.263. That points towards a possibility of further upside. And certainly, as we see here from last week, if we see strength in terms of the US economy, like we saw with the jobs report, 
then we're likely to see further upside in terms of the dollar index. When we see that US inflation report, I think it's likely we see the inflation uh, picture move significantly lower, and that could pull back the dollar index uh, for that period. But nonetheless, we've got a near-term uptrend over the course of 2024 thus far. I think there's a good chance that we see some uh, shift in terms of pricing, maybe not towards three rate cuts, but maybe towards four and away from five. So we could see some further upside for the US dollar off the back of that. And then essentially, it's a question mark of, you know, are we just going to focus on whether we're going to see three or four or five rate cuts? Or are we going to focus on the fact that it's an election year? We're going to see the US economy likely strengthen, the global economy strengthen, hopefully China strengthen, stocks doing well, I think there's likely to be a risk on play that doesn't necessarily benefit the US dollar uh, sort of gathering momentum um, before too long. But for the near term, I think there is risk that we see further upside coming into play. And that would point towards the possibility of further downside for the short term. The long term picture for gold is undoubtedly a bullish one. And we've generally seen um, periods of interest rate cuts mark the beginning of or the center of a bull run for gold. So I am expecting to see gold break out towards the upside. We saw this fake out in December, and we've been starting to weaken from there. We're not necessarily seeing a huge move lower thus far, but certainly if we start to take out the likes of the 2000, the 1973, then it could point towards a, a wider pullback in play. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen because I think that we could see some dollar upside, um, but I don't necessarily think it's going to be huge dollar upside. Um, I think that we could see some further repricing, but we've already seen a significant amount. So that could pull us back down towards the 2000 or 1973. I think there's a good chance that we consolidate within this. And ultimately, the long term trend for me is a bullish one like we see here on the monthly time frame. So I think there is a good chance that within this year, we see a nice breakout and we push onwards and upwards and continue this long term uptrend that has typically favored gold and precious metals at times of monetary easing. But how do things look in terms of silver? Not necessarily so hunky-dory at the moment. Like I said, uh, this is a market that has really struggled at times when we see the precious metal space coming under pressure. And that's exactly what we're seeing now three months in a row. Well, we're just starting uh, the third. Um, but that comes off the top end of this symmetrical triangle formation. The trend line support is certainly going to be notable. And unless we break the 20696 level, we could find support once again certainly uh, that would be a particularly interesting move if we see us coming into this level around about that US CPI report because we could see a short-term rebound coming into play but for the time being we do have this trend of lower highs lower lows and it looks like we're feeding into that once again to fall back down towards trend line support. So near term, I think there is a good chance that we see this market come under pressure once again. The US inflation report is going to be interesting as a potential respite for these markets. And when we see some potential further repricing for the likes of um, when we see some further repricing for the expectations around how much uh, in the Federal Reserve is going to do this year, we could see some further upside for the US dollar. Um, but for the long term, I do think risk assets are going to outperform this year. I do think that this is going to be a year that really shifts the onus back towards equity market strength, US dollar weakness later on in the year, interest rate cuts as we see them try to normalize it. It's a question of trying to get inflation back down towards target. And I think the US is going to struggle a little bit more than other countries. Um, but the likes of the ECB, the likes of the Bank of England and other central banks will be cutting interest rates by probably a greater degree this year. And so that all really feeds into a potential positive tone within equity markets. And that should drive the US dollar lower later on in the year to the benefit of precious metals.